So this is a brief presentation about a very specific aspect of the symbol of the serpent, namely its relationship with ancient goddess worship practices and the feminine principle and how its image was reappropriated to define millennia of feminine oppression. I believe that the oppression of the feminine is not a social issue, but a psychological one. The serpent, mainly because of its ability to shed its skin and be reborn, represents the transformative power of the goddess and her awesome powers of regeneration. Joseph Campbell mentions that the serpent is at home in the depths, under the trees, inside their roots where it's quite watery and dark, aspects and characteristics that are traditionally attributed to the feminine principle as well. Numerous myths and images from prehistoric to historic times connect the worship of the goddess and the ancient feminine religion with the serpent. Images that have been discovered in countless excavations. As Maria Gambutas observed, the snake and its abstract derivation, the spiral, are the dominant motifs of the art of old Europe. Rianne Eisler tells us that evidence of the deification of the feminine goddess can be found in, quote, the three main centers of the origins of agriculture, Asia Minor in the Southeastern Europe, Thailand in Southeast Asia, and later on also in Middle America. In countless representations of the goddess, the serpent can be found as either her consort, her emblem, or her primary form of manifestation. There are images of snake goddesses or of goddesses holding snakes. Quote, in Mesopotamia, a goddess excavated from a 24th century BCE site has a serpent coiled around her throat. So does an almost identical figure from 100 BCE India. In ancient Egyptian mythology, the cobra goddess Uazit is the original creatrix of the world. The Canaanite goddess Ashtoreth or Astarte is depicted with the serpent. In the 2500 BCE Sumerian bas relief called the Goddess of the Tree of Life, we find two serpents right next to two images of the goddess. Joseph Campbell also examines the ubiquity of the serpent in ancient religious rites and rituals and concludes that before the patriarchal masculine love came along, the serpent was a deity in its own right and often both the image and the consort husband of the goddess. In these images, the serpent is usually accompanied with images of the moon and a cup bearing fluids for initiates to drink. Joseph Campbell finds that in pre-patriarchal times, the divinity was often female, and that all her symbols are ultimately different aspects of the same divinity in a variety of forms. So her anthropomorphic form is a woman, her theriomorphic form is a snake, her vegetal form is a tree, her heavenly form is the moon, and her elemental form is the water of life. The main point of religious practices involving images of the serpent was to alert the initiate to the truth of his or her own immortality. The serpent furthermore symbolized and connected the goddess to oracular and prophetic wisdom. As Rianne Eisler tells us, quote, from the ancient Egyptian records, we know that the picture of the cobra was a hieroglyphic sign for the word goddess and that the cobra was known as the eye, Uzait a symbol of mystic insight and wisdom." End quote. The Egyptian cobra goddess was called Uazit, and even later goddesses Ma'at and Hathor were still known as the eye. An image of a rearing cobra was to shine on the foreheads of royalty. Even the famous oracular shrine of Delphi was originally associated with the goddess through the image of a serpent. Apollo's shrine always had a female priestess, and the original one was called Pythia, who, as Rian Eisler tells us, quote, sat upon a tripod stool around which a snake called the python coiled. Interestingly, in later post-Homeric, read patriarchal Greek mythology, Apollo kills the same python and afterwards establishes his oracle upon the same spot. In fact, as the destruction of the old world of goddess worship proceeded over millennia, and as old ideas had to be, quote, defeated, distorted, and discredited, unquote, numerous mythical images of superheroic men destroying the serpent were produced. Famous examples of male heroes conquering the snake monster are Yahweh and the Leviathan, the serpent and water monster, Zeus and Typhon, Apollo and Python, Indra 
Indra, king of the Vedic pantheon and the cosmic serpent, Viritra. Apparently, patriarchy is not limited to the Judeo-Christian world. Hercules and the serpent Ladon, guardian of the sacred fruit tree of the goddess Hera, and Perseus and the Gorgon Medusa. I'm sure there's more. In conquering the great serpent, the hero patriarchs wanted to conquer cosmic eternity itself, to take it in hand, own it like property, make it work for them, and make it start paying dividends. Typical Westerners not fully knowledgeable about the ancient feminine and mysterious associations of the serpent tend to see it from the biblical perspective through perhaps the most famous of all creation myth lenses, the story of Adam and Eve. The story goes that a wicked and maleficent serpent cooed into Eve's ear about how remarkable she would become if only she disobeyed Yahweh and ate the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge. And of course, Eve, vain sexual manipulator that she was, tricked Adam into also eating the fruit. And well, God is wrathful and he punishes them and the rest is his story. <laughs> <laughs> but Rianne Eisler makes a strong case for a different version of events that is more in keeping with historical accounts of ancient goddess worship religions. She tells us that, quote, the garden is an allegorical description of the Neolithic, of when women and men first cultivated the soil, thus creating the first garden. It also represents an earlier time when, when humans led more harmonious lives. Furthermore, groves of sacred trees, quote, were an integral part of the old religions. So were rites designed to induce in worshipers a consciousness receptive to the revelation of divine or mystical truths. Rites which women officiated as priestesses of the goddess, end quote. Eisler believes that the fact that Eve disobeyed Yahweh and instead took her orders from the serpent, i.e. from the goddess, is no accident. Quote, like the tree of life, the tree of knowledge was a symbol associated with the goddess. So from the perspective of Eve, the prototypical woman, a masculine upstart god commanding that death and destruction be the order of the day, and even telling her what she can and cannot do while undertaking her divine duties as priestess of the goddess is 100% unacceptable and even sacrilegious. This creation myth which sealed the doom of womankind once and for all is really a story of a woman priestess of the goddess refusing to worship a new masculine god of death. It is a story that shows what happens to women who disobey the new ruling order and continue to worship the goddess. Quote, Henceforth, she would have to submit in all things, not only her sorrow, but her conception. The number of children she must bear would be greatly multiplied. And for all eternity, she was now to be ruled by this vengeful God and his earthly representative, man." Unquote. As a woman who is slowly discovering the many deceitful ways in which images of the feminine have been systematically discredited and devalued, and as a woman who has had to contend with overwhelmingly negative manifestations of masculine values and domination, most horrifyingly, even discovering some of these attitudes and behaviors living in my own soul, I find this re-mything of the ancient symbol of the serpent to be of extreme interest and value, especially the way it has been told in the Adam and Eve story. It is yet another example of how we are manipulated into living apart from our deeper selves, apart from the mysterious, cosmic, and eternal inner world that the serpent also represents. I think that broadcasting truthful accounts of these myths and stories with a bigger apparatus is a worthy endeavor toward which I am beginning to orient my vocational path. The serpent is just one symbol out of many that has been reappropriated and discredited and smeared. The overall project of feminine oppression that has been masquerading as religion through misrepresented truths in ancient mythologies needs all our attention if we ever hope to live in a more peaceful world. I also believe that humanity's overarching malaise, our loss of soul, as Jung called it, needs the same project of feminine oppression to be unanimously overturned, not just in the world at large, but inside our very souls. Thank you.
going away. Yeah. And that the shedding of the skin is so refreshing. Yeah. And that's the thing, the, um, there's so many other ways that the serpent, you know, it's like kind of endless how, yeah. how, much, how much symbolism of the serpent there is. So I had to like just pick one little area yeah. that I could focus on. Um, but yeah. I, I'm working on a project and Eve is sitting on the top of the earth <laughs> very seductively with this great big red apple with a bite out of it. And um, Adam's coming down on a UFO with a, with a staff, and he's looking down at like his tongue is hanging out. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> it, yeah, it's just being. I have all the you know everything for it, but it's just that is one of the greatest stories. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's a lie that. Has I know, it's a lie. <laughs> but it's a really great story to paint. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It has to be retold in so many different ways. Because she's becoming in, in the painted. Yeah. So. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's what I I like your version because it's it's something that one I I haven't heard before, and I really like how you brought it in and and really tied in like the his story portion of yeah, it. Yeah. I, I, I've heard of the snake being a feminine entity, um, but I, I haven't heard of it as a goddess. So I really liked how you threw that in and, and brought the cobra into it, brought a lot of this um, ancient artwork that has been overlooked due to this other masculine type of yeah. you know, divinity that has taken over. Yeah. So I appreciate that you tied them together and showed the differences. Well, I was um, taking from this, these, these mm -hmm. are the two books, but um, we've been taught to fear it, right? Mm -hmm. Fear the snake, the snake is like this evil thing, mm -hmm. Eve is evil, okay. you know? And, and a lot of, even in a lot of other movies and fairy tales and such that you see, this, the snake does portray the, the villain. The villain. Mm -hmm. Because some snakes are poisonous, but most of them, I wouldn't say most of them, but many of them are not. Yeah, and, just and like plants. Yeah. Just yeah. like plants. Just like plants. Just like anything can be poison. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, reappropriating the snake as a representative of female energy. And uh, female snakes can reproduce without males. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So, I mean, wow. You know, That's we don't amazing. even need a. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, in college, I um, adopted or became the steward of a. 12 and a half foot long Burmese python. Wow. And wow. it was a female, her name was Sugar. And she was so sweet. And during, I, I, it was, I had had two snakes prior to that as a child, but um, I've always had kind of interest in snakes as pets. But um, I had a wonderful time with her. And there was a lot of beauty in the snake, just touching this giant snake and feeling her yeah. move and, um, and she was sweet. Mm -hmm. I, that's yeah, why she. Was, and so the, I agree with you. The whole idea of the snake is bad or whatever is just is ridiculous. Well, there, there's a, there was this great story in Occidental mythology too that Joseph Campbell talks about at the moment of the Buddha's enlightenment. That um, and this is a story that is so I, I was like burst into tears when I read it. But um, he achieves enlightenment. And he's just in this state of ecstatic bliss. And Mara, who is the, you know, the trickster god, and um, some say the, the god of darkness or evil, but or just just illusion, he comes along and he starts to harass the Buddha. He wants to distract him and um, mess with him and get him to fall off his, you know, and and the Buddha just takes his hand and touches the earth. And Joseph Campbell says the earth, the earth, the mother, she screams loud. She <laughs> says, I, I am a witness to thee, like, or I thee witness. That's what she says. She says, I thee witness really loud and it like scares Mara and he runs off. And at that moment, she sends up this giant cobra from the earth or is it a python? I don't know, but he, um, the snake coils around the Buddha and brings his hood over his head so that he is completely protected mm -hmm. from all the elements uh, because at that moment, apparently, he sits there for like 
seven times seven days and nights in just like ecstatic bliss, you know, and, and only then does he get up and kind of go, okay, now I'm hungry. <laughs> it's a <pretty> <laughs> Yeah. I um, just wanted to compliment you. That was very powerful and you packed a lot into it. And I would just encourage you to consider expanding it, like even for a conference or, I mean, you could even do a dissertation on it, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'm only just starting to dawn. It's only just starting to dawn on me. Yeah. <laughs> All this stuff is, I'm a little bit of a late bloomer. It's only just dawning on me that, what the fuck? Excuse me. <laughs> um, but like, no, this these stories can't go on unchallenged. And yeah. so and I'm gonna ask some of my professors yeah. to like help me get into like the feminist literature because I'm way behind on that. I haven't read any. I don't think I've read them, not knowingly anyway. Oh, there's but there's like, so much. Yeah, yeah so already. Exactly. I'm just gonna like try to catch up a little and then. Um, but yeah, for for what? Because we only had ten minutes. But you know, if you wanted to, you could. Yeah. Really well, the idea of women and feminine oppression, especially through dance, is something I'm, I'm thinking of incorporating into my, <coughs> into my um, dissertation. And the power of women dancing together. Or co uh, Yeah, or <laughs> uh, a very good point about how we're all in the patriarchy and that it is deep within. Everybody male, female, you know, old. Um, of Campbell's comparative study, he was very big on finding the universality of how things are similar in different cultures, religions, traditions, times, and eras. And the serpent was the exception. The big, of all major mythic images, it was the one that was, that was different in different places. For example, in Chinese and Japanese culture, the serpentine themes are all positive, totally positive. They are not been reversed. They are uh, a, a snake is a sign of eternal life because of the repetition of shedding of the skin. Regeneration was a very big theme in the East. The arrival of a dragon is good fortune. So it's very interesting to see how, how it could be because it's alive and well in other places. Right, exactly. In um, 